Hey guys, Peter here to do an album review. Today I'm here to tell you all about the latest album from Saint Asania, Flawed Design, out October 25th on Spine Farm Records. This album has 11 tracks, 44 minutes in length, and this is the band's second full-length studio album, first with Spine Farm. This band has gone through a lot of changes, their members have gone through changes, there's been growth, there's been growing pains, if you will. Uh, and that to me is reflected on every aspect of the album, on the lyrics, on the structure, on the sound, on the mood, even if you look at it on the album title. Flawed design, there's definitely nothing flawed about the design of this record as far as sound structure or even lyrics are concerned. The only flawed design that I see is us humans. We are a flawed design. And the moment you realize that, you're taking the first step towards fixing that problem. So to me, this is where the album title comes in, but it's deep, deeply connected to the overall root of this record, to the overall lyrics, the overall atmosphere, mood, like I said, and sound that the album has to offer. The band has gone through some lineup changes going into this record. We see the addition of Kill Gontier from Art of Dying and Sal Giancarelli from Stained. So these are two new faces on this record that were not present on the previous record. The album is without a doubt a journey. But to me there's growth, it's a journey and there's growth to it. So this is not just a journey where you're going from point A to point B, but you're going through that journey from point A to point B, but you're also growing as a human being. You're going through different aspects of that growth, you're going through different moments of that growth that really are reflected in different stages throughout the album. Anger, self-doubt, self-realization, understanding, reconciliation. To me, these are all the different stages of growth that we see present on this record from the beginning, from the first track, working all the way to the last track of the album. At first glance, I felt that this album felt like it dipped in intensity as it progressed. It felt like it came on very strong, very robust with the first four or five tracks. And then it became a lot more melodic, a, 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 lot, a, a little bit darker, if you will. But it became a lot more methodic. And it felt to me like it lost intensity as it moved f towards the end of the record. That was at first glance. The moment I started listening to the album more and got deeper into the lyrical content of the album and start to understand a little bit better about the overall structure that this album had to offer, I start to realize that the intensity did not go away. The album does not lose intensity. It just shifts it into different places. So in the first couple of tracks, you may feel like the intensity is coming from the guitar riffs or the gu overall guitar sound. And then later on, you feel like the intensity is perhaps coming more from the lyrical content, the overall emotion that the tracks carry. So overall, the album is intense from the beginning to the end. There is a shift on where that intensity lies from track to track. So that is a, the little caveat that I found listening to this record. Vocally. All right, so vocally. Adam has always been one of my favorite voices in hard rock. Uh, I've, I've been a fan of his since his days with Three Days Grace. So this album to me did not prove anything that I didn't know. It, it just really reconfirms what an incredible vocalist he is. He has a magnificent voice, has magnificent vocals. He knows exactly when to slightly change it in order to give a different emphasis to the lyrics of the song, in order to give a different mood, a different presence to the track. And on this album to me, I feel like he's grown a little bit more with this record. I, I, perhaps a little bit more comfortable in, in its own skin, a little bit more comfortable with what this band is about. And, and it's, it comes across in the songs, and comes across in his delivery, and it comes across uh, in, in the mood that he puts forward on every single track. It's absolutely phenomenal. Incredible vocal performance on this album by Adam. He's phenomenal. Like I said, always been a fan of his. And this album, like I said, does not uh, uh, change how I view it. It just really emphasizes how good his vocals are and overall work when it comes to hard rock and when it comes to music. Absolutely incredible vocals. As far as sound, I, I really felt that the guitar melodies, the guitar riffs on this album felt stronger. I felt like they had more sound. I, I felt like there's been an evolution from the previous record to this record. I don't want to say that they feel a little bit more mature on this album, but I feel like there's been a little bit of a departure from where these guys have been in previous bands and perhaps now they're finally figuring it out exactly what Saint Sonia is and what sound they want from this band. So I felt that that really came across in the guitars and uh, the overall guitar work, it would be the solos, the guitar riffs, the melodies that they use. I just felt like this album had a little bit more personality. It had a, a bigger fingerprint of what Saint Sonia is 
and perhaps open the doors to the fans to see where this band is going to go moving forward. So I really feel a little bit of a departure from the previous record in a good way. Once again, there's a little bit of growth uh, from a sound perspective, specifically coming from the guitars. It's really present on this album, so you really feel like this album showcases uh, uh, the path that they have taken from where they left off on the last record until now. It's really present on this album, and it's really present in its sound. This, to me, overall, now if I have to look at the overall picture of Flawed Design by Sinasonia, this album, in my opinion, one of the best records of 2019, uh, as far as hard rock is concerned. It's really magnificent. When you look at the overall structure of the, of the album, very level, uh, with intensity changing from different aspects of the record, but never really going away. The amazing guitar work that this album has to offer, either being solos, melodies, or guitar riffs, like I mentioned before, Adam's vocals, a few caveats to the vocals is two guest appearances by Sully from Godsmack and Sharon from Within Temptation. So you have those two little additions to the table, but the overall body of work as far as vocals are concerned is absolutely phenomenal. It carries so much emotion, it carries so much intensity in it. So to me, this is without a doubt one of the best hard rock albums of 2019. I have no doubt about that. Magnificent work all around on all different aspects of the record. Structure, sound, vocals, lyrics, everything was spot on. This is a, a record that in my opinion shows that a lot of work went into it because they really didn't leave anything up to chance. All the T's were crossed, all the I's were dotted. As far as songs are concerned, uh, I picked three songs that were not released as singles, three songs that I really identified with, and I have to start with Sirens, is my absolute favorite song on the record. And having said that, it's one of the songs to me that's really more of a throwback uh, to perhaps earlier work by the members of this band. It just has a little bit more of that feel. It has an overall really pop structure to the song, and I think that really works extremely well with the lyrical content and overall makes the song a lot more hooky and catchy. This is a great track. Like I said, my favorite song, I really like the opening of the piano with Sharon's voice on it. Uh, she she sings in this song, Sharon from Within Temptation. This is a song that, that she's uh, on uh, on this record and she adds a different level to the song. Adam's vocals on this track are absolutely phenomenal, but her addition really, really expands the sound and really expands the emotion that the track carries in the lyrics. I love the beginning of the song, the piano intro with her voice singing a few words of the chorus, really the perfect melody to get this track started. Uh, the, the song really has a lot of life in it. It has a lot of energy in it. These are two incredible vocalists that really share different momentums of the song, uh, um, with Adam taking uh, the majority of the work during the verses, and then the two of them coming together in the chorus to really bring this beautiful melody, but this wall of sound at the same time. I really feel like the chorus works. It's simple, it's hooky, it's catchy, and when you have these two vocalists, these two incredible vocalists, singing together in the chorus, it really elevates the sound of the song, but to me more importantly, it elevates the overall mood and atmosphere that the track has. I love how it comes back at the end, back to the piano, so it's a song that goes absolutely full circle. The way it starts is the way it ends. I love that about the track. The track, like I said, has a very pop structure, but to me that really works well, it makes the song more memorable, makes the story more of the song more hooky, more catchy, and therefore becoming one of my favorite songs on the album. Next is Ghost, a very melodic stripped down intro, also using piano. They actually used the piano quite a bit on this album and I really like that. It adds a different element, it adds a different flavor, it adds a different texture to the songs. It just really offers a little bit more. It almost expands the sound of hard rock, it really pushes that sound and increases the boundaries that it has. This is another song that has the piano in it. Like I said, it has a very melodic stripped down approach at the intro until you reach the chorus. But this is a song that, in my opinion, picks up volume and intensity as it progresses. From the first line of the verse to the last line of the chorus, it's a song that always feels like has a crescendo to it, that it's picking up steam, that's picking up energy, moving it closer and closer to the chorus until it gets to the chorus, and then it's very robust. Uh, it's very pungent, it really comes across extremely well. There's a great piano bridge added uh, added to the song that gives the song, perhaps where you would expect a guitar solo, they put a piano in there, and that to me added a little bit of darkness and it made the rest of the song feel even more powerful, feel even more intense because it brought the mood down and therefore elevating everything else that's built around it. I love 
the structure of this song and I love the sound, but almost more important, I really love the piano on this on, on this specific track. It's absolutely magnificent. It adds such such a symphonic element to the song. It, it, it really elevates the value, the, over, the overall feel and the overall power that this song has. Last, Justify, a song that has a very heavy spinal chord uh, it, it, and that's the predominant DNA that this song really has to offer. The, the heaviness really slows down the song, so this is not a song that has great tempo, great momentum. It's a more methodic song. The, it, it has a little bit, like, like I said, of that heaviness that it drags the song down. This is almost what I would call a heavy ballad. It, it's almost constructed as a ballad, but it does not necessarily sound like a pure ballad. There are some heavy moments to it. So I really like that fusion, that blend of having a song that has pretty much a ballad structure to it, but has a little bit more of a heavy note to it. So I, I really like that feel. I like that construction. I also like the vocals on this track. I like the layering that they did. They did a lot of layers of vocals specifically in the chorus. It really works well because Adam has a great melodic uh, a clean voice so by adding layers to it it increased the volume that that the chorus had it, it gave more substance to the chorus so i really like what they did there the solo on this track is also phenomenal it has a classic sound to it, it has a classic feel to it it fits the song to perfection it fits that ballad structure to perfection because this is a solo that you would definitely get on a ballad so it works extremely well in this song it works with the overall feel that the track has and more importantly it works with the overall structure that it has it has great defined moments it has the perfect blend of vocals with with a, with a heavy connotation of guitar riffs so i really like that feel i really like that construction i really like justify as a song overall this is it guys this is saint Sonia flaw design out october 25th on spine farm records let me know your thoughts on the band on the album on the singles use the comment section below i'll be reading those and getting back to you take care guys